Hey Thinksters, what's up? It's Chris, founder of Thinkster.com and in today's video we are going to learn how to check if a list contains a certain element or not. So this is a very common problem. You will, um, you will stumble upon this problem a lot of time in your practical code snippets. So given a list of values, now as you know a list can be heterogeneous, it can contain any value you want. Uh, so this list contains three values. So we have integers, we have a string and um, yeah, that's it. And now we want to do something like this. So, so now this is this is like pseudocode what I'm doing. So you want to check if list contains a certain element, can be any element, you want to do something, okay? So this is what you want what you want to accomplish. And as usual in these videos, I go over multiple ways or uh, showing multiple ways of solving this problem. And each way has its own um, uh, purpose. So it, 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 each, each way will be the best, the most Pythonic way of solving this problem in a certain um, in a certain uh, context, okay. So, and I will also discuss the context. And this is this is very important for uh, pro coders that you know which way to prefer in which context, because there's no absolute best way. Otherwise, uh, otherwise the creators of Python wouldn't allow any other way. If so, if one way would be superior to all other ways, then this would be the default way, and nobody would use any other way. But this is not as it as it is in practice. So, in practice, some ways. Um, are better in some contexts and other ways are better in other contexts. Okay, so and this is this is um, kind of this trade-off you always have to keep in mind. Okay, but first of all, the most simple simple way of checking if an element, say Alice, is in a certain list is to use the is the in keyword. Okay, and the in keyword it's built in in Python. You don't have to import anything. You just check is the element Alice in our list. Okay, and this can be any element. It can be Alice, it can be one, it can be three, it can be an element that is not in the list. Okay, if it is in the list, so this expression evalu evaluates to true if the element, the first operand, uh, exists in this list. So if the if um, the list contains function, basically implements this. And um, uh, so you can do something like here. Yeah. So like you, for example, you could print yes. And now this will re return yes. Okay, but um, so keep stay stay with me for a moment because it uh, will become more interesting. Yeah. So for example, what happens if you have multiple such comparisons? Yeah. So you have like you check if Alice is in the list, and also you check if Bob is in the list. Print Bob, and now say you also check if uh, say for the two in the list. Print for the two or something. Yeah. So now you have three statements you have uh, you check three times whether a certain element is in the list or not and this is um, now it become now this method of just using the in in keyword is not the most pythonic way of solving this problem in my opinion uh, the most pythonic way would be to convert the list to a set let's call it a, um, s we use the set constructor and convert it to a to a set and now you we need to use a set here in each instance why is this better the reason is that the that the in keyword for lists goes over each element in the list. Okay, so it checks is the first element equal to Alice? No. Is the second element equal to Alice? Yes. And not only then it returns. Okay, so and this means that in worst case, or if the element does not exist in the list, it goes over all n elements of a list. And if you have a list with a lot of elements, say n is a very large size, so you have thousands or tens of thousands of elements, then it will perform tens of thousands of operations to check if an element is in the list or not. And of course, this is very inefficient. Yeah? So it grows with growing list size, and number of comparisons you need to perform grows. And if you, if you now do this like once, twice, three times in your code, then you have to do this three times 10,000 operations if the list has 10,000 elements. Okay, so this is not very efficient uh, in, 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 in this context. And therefore it's better to convert the list once to a set because the checking membership in the set, so the set also allows for the in keyword. So you can also check if an element is in a set um, by using the in keyword, but it is much more efficient. It takes a constant number of operations. So no matter how large the set becomes, even if it has thousands or tens of thousands of elements, it's only like a constant number of operations, one operation. And contextually, it's only one operation to check if an, if an element is in the set or not. So you don't have to check, go over the, all the elements in the set and check if they are equal. So this is not how set how membership is implemented in sets. Sets are based on hash tables, so it's an efficient data structure for checking membership. You just have to remember this. And um, 
and therefore it's best to convert it once to a set. This has linear runtime complexity, so if you have 10,000 elements, it will take you 10,000 operations to, to do this. So it's like it has the same runtime complexity as checking membership, but you do, you do it only once. And now you, can, you have constant runtime complexity for the first, second and third operation, and therefore it's more efficient code. Okay, so converting it to a set is the most Pythonic way um, of checking membership if, it, if you have to do it multiple times, so at least two times. So if you check membership more than two times, the rule of thumb is to convert it to a set first. Okay, so let's um, have a look at a naive approach of, of um, checking membership. So I just want to have all, all discuss all approaches. So you can have the following for X in the list. So you go over all elements in the list and now you check if this element, um, for example, is equal to Alice. And in this case, you can do something. So this seems, this seems very naive and nobody would actually write code like this yeah, in this specific context. But in some cases it's best to use this approach. First of all, it's easy to read and understand even for non-Python coders. So if you come from Java or so, you are very used to this kind of programming. And the second thing is that it's, um, so if you have like complicated loop bodies, say this, this loop body doesn't consist of a single print statement, but of 10 statements. In this case, you would, you would actually use this method or you would prefer this method because now it's, um, uh, so I mean, of course you can also have like use the, um, the in keyword here, but this is one advantage, the one further advantage that we'll, uh, we'll discuss in a moment. But in this case, so, uh, so you could also do the same thing here with list comprehension or so, but you wouldn't use list comprehension if the loop body is too complicated. So therefore this is preferred over list comprehension, which we will discuss uh, in a later part in the video. But um, so it, you would prefer it over this comprehension, but you will also prefer it over the um, the in method. Uh, the is in method, yeah. Um, so if x in um, the list, for example, also if if Alice in the list. So you could also you could like the alternative is this: if Alice in list, print yes. Uh, so now in, th in this specific context, they are semantically equivalent. But if you have multiple, multiple occurrences of the word Alice, then the first one will execute only once, while this one will execute for each occurrence in the list. And sometimes you want exactly this behavior. And if you, if you do this, so if you want this behavior, and if you have a more complicated uh, loop body or conditional um, execution body, then you should actually prefer this um, third method which we will, uh, which uh, I've shown you. Yeah. So the first method was to use the in key in statement. The second one is to use the set conversion method. And the third one is to use this for statement. And you see in different contexts, you should use different methods to accomplish the same thing. And um, so let's, let's discuss a variant of this, um, which is based on this comprehension. And it's a bit prettier. It's a bit more Pythonic and you can do something. So say you have a more complicated list. Um, like this. So it contains some Alice elements, some Bob element, and say you run a web website, website for example, and then a user Alice sa says that he, uh, she wants to uh, be anonymized. Okay, so she doesn't want to appear in your website again. So you should anonymize all occurrences of Alice, not a, only a single one, but all occurrences. So you need to like modify and uh, uh, do, uh, yeah, modify. Um, each occurrence of the Alice keyword, then you should use list comprehension because then it's like it doesn't help that you can you you do so, like one membership operation if Alice in the list and then you modify this element for example because then it will be only uh, so it will only occur for so it will only happen once and it's also not not very Pythonic to do this okay but you can create a new list encrypt Alice for example using the following statement. Uh, like you encrypt Alice with uh, three X characters. Um, if your element X is Alice, else you simply return the element X. So this is like the expression part. Okay, the ternary operator. Uh, you you perform the the first. So the first one will be the resulting value X X S a string consisting of three characters X. Um, but only if X is Alice. If X is equal to Alice. Otherwise, it will simply return the, the value. So for all other strings that are not Alice, like Bob and 42, it will just return the string, this ternary operator. Otherwise, if the string is Alice, then it will return x, x, x. So it will anonymize uh, Alice. But now you have to define the variable x. 
So we um, go, we create the context for X in list. So this is how list comprehension works. It consists of an expression part. Um, this is the expression part and of a context part to define the variable names that you use in the expression. And we only use the variable name X basically. So we need to define only X here in the context part. Okay, so and if you if you print encrypt Alice, you see now we have encrypted all occurrences of the word Alice in the in our list. Okay, so this is also this method um, with list comprehension. It's most useful if you want to if you don't only want to check membership, but you want to modify the behavior of some list elements and others not. And um, okay, so then but let's go back to membership operations. So one is uh, you can also use another method is. So say if you say you have this original list again, this one, and you need to close it. And now you want to check if membership um, do something like print yes. So this um, general um, general uh, framework, then you can replace this membership also using the any function. And the any function is also quite useful. It um, so it you need to pass an iterable into the any function, and then it checks if any element in your iterable evaluates to true then it will return true the over, overall thing will return true and it will uh, and you will enter the this conditional branch so you will print yes so now you need to define the iterable and uh, as iterable again we use a generator expression so it's similar to list comprehension but without the outer list brackets and you check the element x x is it equal to alice for x in list so you go over all elements x in your list and now you check if the element x is equal to Alice. So you will have an iterable of Boolean values indicating whether the whether each element is equal to Alice or not. And if it is equal, it will return true, otherwise it will return false. So if the string Alice occurs in your list, this whole thing, this whole any function will evaluate to true. If it occurs at least once, if it occurs multiple times, it will still uh, evaluate to true. So therefore you will enter this, um, this uh, part, okay? And uh, so in this case, so it also returns yes, of course. In this case, you wouldn't do this, of course, because you can also check simply Alice in list. So the first way would still be the best, but you, can, um, you will use it if you want to perform some more complicated checks. For example, you can also do some regular expression search. So for example, you want to check for each element whether, the, whether it starts with the character a for example yeah so you can do x starts with a for example and it would also work yeah um starts with uh, x for x in list okay so of course you need to convert it to a string first because uh, you, you can also have integers okay so now let's run this you see the result is yes okay so this can also be done you can have arbitrary complicated expressions here and in this case the any operation is actually quite useful okay so because then you can you can simply check for uh, for a given list how many uh, whether a certain condition meets or uh, at least one element in your list and you can basically you can generalize it at least one element in your iterable okay so these are the these are the different ways of accomplishing the same thing if you like the video, then give it a like, subscribe and uh, check out the related article. I will link to the article in the description below and see you in the next video. Bye.